If you have been watching my channel for a while, you might know that I'm an advocate for putting my noise reduction at the back of the note tree instead of in the front. But that's about to change. Hey guys, I'm Danny, your friendly neighborhood colorist, and in this video, we are going to be talking about noise reduction again. So in my previous two videos where I talk about noise reduction note placement and also the ultra noise reduction in DaVinci Resolve 19, I have since taken down both videos because there's new information that I found regarding to how I'm going to be using noise reduction moving forward. And these methods will be implemented to the visionary power grids where currently on version 5.1, it's located at the back of the note tree. Moving forward for version 6, it's going to be placed in front. And this decision might be influenced by how DaVinci Resolve and also other plugins like Neat Video, which we will talk about later on, how they analyze for noise. On this channel, I make very result-oriented decisions. So the last time that I did this test was around one or two years ago. So I think that how they analyze noise has changed since then. So that's the gist of the whole video. But if you're interested to know why I switched from putting the noise reduction at the back of the note tree to the front, then we'll go into some experiments that I recently did. So here I have three clips which were all shot on a Sony Burano in 6K. And the higher the resolution you go, the more noise will be apparent in your clip. So 6K will give you very, very heavy noise, especially on a clip like this, which are all shot in the night. So we have a lot of noise to tackle. And if you want to do your noise reduction, it's recommended to do it in your export resolution, which is in this case 6K because they want the source quality in case they want to zoom in. If you're exporting for 4K, then you can do your noise reduction on a 4K timeline. If you're exporting for 1080p, then you can do it on a 1080p timeline. If you're going to export in 6K, but you reduce the noise in 1080p, then the final output will still be quite noisy. So to run you through what I'm doing with the DaVinci noise reduction, let's turn this on and go over to my motion effects palette where you can locate the temporal noise reduction and also the spatial noise reduction. And let's zoom in to this corner so that you can see on YouTube since it's a little bit compressed. What I'm doing in my temporal noise reduction is setting it to three frames and motion estimation type to better. And then I'm controlling the luma and chroma to give us a clean result. And how to determine a clean result, we can just look at the waveform. If I turn off the noise reduction, you see that there's a lot of white spots coming up and this is all our noise. If I simply turn it on, you see that all these white spots will disappear. There, it takes a little bit of time for it to kick in. So for my spatial noise reduction, I'm using the AI Ultra Noise Reduction. And previously when I mentioned in my video that Ultra Noise Reduction is just normal noise reduction, just that it knows how to analyze, it's actually much stronger than that. It's reducing noise more effectively than I initially thought. So it's not the usual noise reduction like the better mode or the enhanced mode. AI noise reduction is actually a lot more powerful. So to give us a cleanest image, I'm using the ultra noise reduction in the spatial section. So that's what I'm doing for the DaVinci built-in noise reduction. For neat video, it's very straightforward. You can just click on neat video in the effects palette, prepare noise profile, a neat video will start up. Then you can either draw your own profile, which you can draw a selection that you want, or you can also go up to your top left to auto profile and it will automatically select a point for you to analyze for noise and you can apply. So instead of having to fiddle around with the temporal and the spatial, Neat Video actually helps you to do both at the same time and it retains the details very well. So no doubt I'm using the best practices for both of these techniques, just that where do we place it in terms of the node tree, in front or at the back. So to save you guys some time, I actually rendered out the different techniques using Neat Video and also using DaVinci Resolve. So in my first layer here, you will see no noise reduction on the video track label. So this is without any noise reduction. I might have to go back and turn this off first. And then we can see here. So there's a lot of noise in this curtains over here where the colors intersect. And this is without any noise reduction. So I'm going to zoom in so that you guys can see all the chromatic noise. So first of all, let's try the technique that I used to use, which is DaVinci Resolve at the back, which is video track two. So I'm going to disable this first track and this is noise reduction at the back. So if we compare noise reduction at the back and in the front, this is front, this is back, front, back. And let's compare between DaVinci's noise reduction and Neat Video in front. So this is DaVinci's in front. 
and this is need video in front. Notice when I enable the need video, you see that the details and the color separation going from one tone to the other is a lot cleaner and it's a lot sharper too. So Neat Video does a really good job in removing the noise while preserving all the details. And now let's try Neat Video at the back. You see that it gets very bloppy. So there's a lot of noise, like this strip here is free of noise, but then the areas beside it is still quite noisy. So if I play it back a little bit, you see that it's giving weird results. So putting Neat Video at the back definitely doesn't give as pleasant results as putting it in the front. So let's see this top here. If I turn, so this is back, this is front, back, front. Front definitely gives a lot more smoother result. And let's move on to the second test where we have our no noise reduction. So you see that there's a lot of noise at her face over here. There's a lot of chromatic noise. And let's try Da Vinci at the back. So Da Vinci at the back gives a pretty good result. And let's compare it with Da Vinci in front. It's more or less the same. So I think it's more or less similar if we put noise reduction at the back or the front using Da Vinci Resolves built in. So let's try noise reduction or neat video in front. I'm seeing a little bit more details in her skin texture and neat video at the back. Definitely a loss of detail. So I still prefer Neat Video in the front. If you compare Neat Video in front with Da Vinci at the back, there's a bit more texture in the Neat Video front. Moving on to our last clip, which is this one in the car. So there's tons of noise in this clip, as we can see all over the clip. So there's a lot of noise on their skin tone, on the whites, but let's focus in on this spot here where we have a bit of a skin tone and also this uh, blue gown. So same thing, let's look at Da Vinci at the back first. So this is no noise reduction. This is Da Vinci at the back. This is Da Vinci in front. I'm seeing a slight shift of contrast, but if you ask me, I think I prefer it slightly more at the back because if you put it at the back, it can read more noise in this particular clip. So it cleans up the noise better. And let's compare Da Vinci at the back with Neat Video at the back. It gives a fairly good result if you're putting it at the back. If we compare Da Vinci at the back with Neat Video in front, Neat Video gives a lot more cleaner result. As you can see in this area here, it's a little bit blurry, but if we switch over to neat video, it's a lot sharper. I think you guys can see that. So there's a little bit too much blur here. If we turn on neat video, it sharpens up a little bit more. It's in the fine details, all these. So this is Da Vinci in front. It's quite noisy, neat video in front. You can see the difference in the details. Neat Video totally takes the chromatic noise away. So from this test, I think using Da Vinci Resolve's built-in noise reduction in front or at the back doesn't really matter. It's based on your workflow. But if you're using Neat Video, definitely put it in the front because it will give you a better result by far. My only concern and the reason why I use to do noise reduction at the back of the note tree is because of the qualifying. Noise reduction is essentially blurring the footage. And if you blur the footage on the start of the note tree where you mess up your signal, it might be slightly more difficult to get a clean qualification if you are using something like the HSL qualifier down the note tree. But I've also tested the secondaries, particularly the qualifier, while having my noise reduction in front. And I don't think that it gives that much of an effect as I was anticipating. So it's okay to do your noise reduction in front of your note tree. And if you're doing it in front, there's another advantage, which is you can cache your note by right-clicking on the note, go down to note cache and turn it on, and go into your playback, render cache, and select user. And this noise reduction will be cached so you don't have to render it again and again if you want to playback smoothly. Speaking about playback, there's an advantage of using Neat Video versus Da Vinci's noise reduction, which is your playback. So playing back 6K footage on a 6K timeline with Da Vinci's noise reduction is basically impossible. 
what I'm getting here is basically 0.5 frames playback. But with neat video, I'm getting 2.5 to 3 frames of playback. So that's almost 6 times faster than DaVinci's noise reduction. But of course, we will not be working in a 6K timeline for sure. So I'm going to switch this over to 1080p and let's see how it plays back. I'm going to go here, switch it to Full HD, 1080p, and play back for DaVinci's noise reduction. Let's select an in and out. And let's see how many frames we get for the playback. For DaVinci's built-in noise reduction, I'm getting 2 frames of playback per second. And let's see for neat video on the 1080p timeline, how many frames are we getting? We are getting 6 frames per second, which is 3 times as much. So you get the same clean results but 3 times the playback, which is very beneficial if you're a working colorist and your client wants to see the playback in real time. So you either have to render cache it or use something lighter like neat video. So as I mentioned at the start of my video, I'm going to implement noise reduction in front of the node tree, starting from my update to the visionary power grids, which is version 6. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that. And if you want to know more about neat video, there's a link down in the description for you to know more. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.